Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me back here on KB Decor Crafts. For today's video, I created four boho style inspired wall decor pieces, all from using Dollar Tree items. They were so easy to make and the turnout just came out so cute. I mostly use items that I already had on hand, so I'm not encouraging anyone to go run out and get supplies needed for these DIYs, but maybe save these for later on craft when it's okay to go out. I hope you all enjoy these as much as I do. Now let's get started. For my first DIY, I used some nautical rope and one of the burner covers from Dollar Tree. I used the biggest one and I first painted that with some white chalk paint, although that step is not necessary. I started by hot gluing the beginning of the rope down in the center of the burner cover and then as I wind it around, I'd add some glue every now and then just to make sure it would stay in place. For this project, I ended up using two and a half packs of the nine and a half foot nautical ropes from Dollar Tree. I continued wrapping the rope around the entire burner cover until I got to the edges and then just brought that down to wrap around the edge as well to cover that up. And this is what it looks like when it's completely wrapped and you don't have to worry so much about the back because that won't be showing at all. To make my tassels, I started with a piece of cardboard that I cut out to be four and a half inches long. Then I wrapped my white yarn about 20 times each for each tassel. Then I would wrap another piece of the yarn to cut out to be able to begin making my tassel. Make sure to carefully remove it from the piece of cardboard. Then with a pair of scissors at the very ends of the yarn, go ahead and cut that in half. Place that on top of the piece of yarn that we cut out and in the middle, you're gonna create a double knot. Once the knot is in place, go ahead and join the two ends together and the center of that where the knot is, is going to be the top of your tassel. Cut out another piece of yarn about eight inches or so and we're gonna wrap that around the top of the tassel, creating another double knot. I like to use the ends of that string to wrap around the tassel to cover up the double knots that we made and then just tucking in the yarn in the back. Once that's done, I use my two fingers to see where the ends of the tassels should meet and then with a pair of scissors, just trim those off. And there you have a really cute tassel. So for the white tassels, I made 17 of them and then I just hot glued them around the edges of the nautical rope. I did run out of white yarn, but I thought I was gonna end up leaving it this way, but later on I obviously added some more tassels and this is how it looked at the end. I just made sure to clean up the edges and then taking it outside, I sprayed it with some Elmer's adhesive spray, making sure to spray both sides of the tassels. This helps stiffen the tassels so that way they didn't flop over. Now that's a completely dry. You could leave it as is. I do like it like this or I would have filled it in completely with white yarn if I had more. But in this case I didn't so I created some tassels made out of the gray yarn that I had from Dollar Tree as well. I did the same process. I made 17 of them to fill in the extra holes. I then took this outside and again sprayed it with the adhesive spray, making sure to spray both sides. I can definitely say this did the trick. It does leave it a little tacky, but in the end it worked out perfectly for me. I then used a little piece of nautical rope and split it in half to create a little hook on the back of this for me to be able to hang up. And this is how it looks hung up. I love the result of this and this is one of my favorite pieces I've made so far. For my next DIY, I wanted to create a little shelf using the bamboo cutting boards from Dollar Tree. I used a ruler to mark off where I wanted to drill my holes and I didn't necessarily measure it. I just made sure that these were straight. I used a power drill to make my four holes. Thank you. 
Now I didn't mind the color of the bamboo, but I wanted to stain it and make it a little bit darker. So that's what I did using the Waverly Wax Antique paint. I just stained it all over and then wiped off the excess with a paper towel. I really like this finish a lot more than what it looked like before. Then taking one of these shower curtain rings that is also from Dollar Tree and some jute string, I hot glued it at the very end and wrapped it around the entire ring to be able to create a hook that's going to hold up my shelf. If you've watched my video on how I made my Easter Bunny napkin ring holders, you'll see I did the same process and just wrapping this around and hot gluing every now and then just to make sure it would stay in place. I then grabbed a small piece of tape to put at the end of the jute string to make sure that it was nice and thinned out to be able to fit through the holes nicely. I threaded the jute string through the top and then pulled it out through until I had the length that I wanted and then going to the other end, pushing it through to be able to come out from the top as well. So then you'll see underneath the jute string will be from one end to the other. I of course did the same thing to the other side, making sure that I had enough support to be able to hang the shelf. I wanted to give this more of a design, so I grabbed some of the Dollar Tree beads and took out the biggest size that they had and painted them with white Waverly chalk paint. I had about five or six of them that I used. Now here I just wanted to show you that the back two uh, pieces of juice string were going to be straight up and the front two were going to be more of a slant towards the back to be able to hold up nicely. Then taking a piece of tape, I wrapped the front two pieces of juice string together to be able to loop the beads through. I did that for all six of them. I wanted to give you a better visual of how the shelf was going to look and how the beads looked on top. I combined all four of the pieces of the jute string together and tied them onto the shower curtain ring. I also made sure the string would be knotted in the back of the ring so that way you wouldn't see it. And also keeping in mind that the two back strings should be straight up and the two front ones should be slanted towards the back. I did also place a little hot glue on the back of that knot to make sure it wouldn't come apart. And here's how my little boho shelf turned out. I used a Dollar Tree succulent and a Target Dollar Spot pot holder that I repainted myself to decorate with. Now for one of my more easier DIYs, I used two of the 8x10 canvases from Dollar Tree. I removed the canvas using my X-Acto knife and saved that for a later DIY. For this DIY, all I needed was the wooden frame. Now to go along with my other pieces, I use the same Waverly Wax Antique paint to stain these frames. Now I found these prints while shopping for essentials at Target at the Target dollar spot for a dollar. There's a set of three of them with different uh, tropical leaves for a dollar. You could also Google um, some tropical leaves and find something similar to these. I'll put down in the description box below a link to ones that I thought were similar. Now for this, all we're going to be doing is hot gluing the frame onto the paper. When I had gone to Dollar Tree for some essentials, I also came across this little tiny cutting board for a dollar, which I thought was great. It's great for purposes like this, when I had a little bit of the paper hanging over that I just cut off with my X-Acto knife. I love how these turned out. They worked out perfectly for what I wanted for my gallery wall, and they were only $3 to make. For my last DIY, I used the same two frames from the canvases from Dollar Tree. I cut off the ends using a little mini saw that I had and did it for both. You could use a hand saw as well, but make sure to smooth out the edges before gluing. I used wood glue to adhere both ends together to create a longer frame.
Once the frame was fully dried, I went ahead and painted it with a white Waverly chalk paint. You could stain this, you can paint it whatever color you choose, I just chose to paint mine white. I would have preferred to use poster paper for the back of my frame, but I only had foam board on hand, so that's what I used for the back, and I just traced the frame. I then cut it out with my X-Acto knife to make sure I had smoother edges. I placed the frame on top of the foam board just to make sure that it lined up correctly. This next part I used jumbo popsicle sticks and medium popsicle sticks. Taking a ruler I made a line straight down the foam board to be able to give me a guide for where I wanted my popsicle sticks to lay. I wanted to create a chevron look with the popsicle sticks so I made sure to cut off the ends with the slant to create a V shape. I used that first popsicle stick to use it as a guide for all the other ones to trace. And in case you're wondering, the jumbo popsicle sticks I'm using are actually from Walmart and the medium sized ones that I'll be using are from Dollar Tree. I'll always have a list down below in the description of where all my items are from. Now as you can see, joining the two ends of the popsicle sticks will help me create that chevron look. I wanted to give this piece different dimensions, different sizes, so that's why I used the medium sized popsicle sticks and just traced the bigger ones as to where I needed the slant for the lines and cut them out. The best part about this piece is that you can customize it however you choose to make it. Once I had everything lined up how I wanted it, I wrote down on each stick what color I wanted to paint it. I used white, black, and some wood stain. Once those were dry, I then began to hot glue them down. It's a little difficult to see, but you want to make sure to keep following that guideline of the line that we drew down the middle. Also, don't worry about the ends that are sticking out. We'll be cutting those off later on. And like I mentioned before, since this is customizable, I just began by laying down different colors and different sizes that I wanted just to create my own pattern. Once I got to the top of my design, I wanted to create a 3D effect with one of the V shapes. So I used the darker wooden color popsicle stick to lay on top of the black and the white and just hot glued that to kind of give it a more 3D effect. I then just continued with my pattern and finished off with a small triangle piece at the end. And this is how my chevron pattern turned out once I was done gluing everything down. Now flipping it over, I just took a box cutter and went over several times behind the popsicle sticks along the line of the foam board to cut them off, and this worked out very easily. Once all the ends are cut off, this is your finished result of what your pattern should look like. And now it's time to add the frame. I first only added hot glue to the frame, but I later on added some wood glue too to make sure it wouldn't peel off. I also wanted to note that I did get some inspiration from the Crafty Couples YouTube channel that recently posted a piece similar to this. I got inspiration from theirs and also from Pinterest, but I created my own design and I love how this turned out. It's one of my favorite pieces I've made so far. And here's the final look of my boho inspired gallery wall art that I made. I love how everything pieced together. It completed my vision entirely and I'm very happy with how this turned out. Like I mentioned before, I'll have down in the description below of items that I've used and pieces that I did not know earlier, but those will be listed down below of where I got them. And yeah, I would love to hear which is your favorite piece. And if you'll be recreating any of these pieces, I would love to see it on Instagram to make sure to tag me. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more DIYs like these. And I'll see you all in my next one.